Hey guys, me Ronald Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. Most things still on track, no huge changes at this point, but two storm systems, 2-1 through 2-8. The initial freezing levels are high. That first storm that comes in on 2-1 is going to run into some very warm air across the west, but it should bring in colder air gradually, and um, that should cool the temperatures across the west, lower some of the freezing levels 2-2, two, 2-3, two, 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 four, and beyond. Storm number one is basically 2-1 through 2-4. It brings a moderate surge of atmospheric river uh, moisture, and it also develops into, uh, lends some energy into the development of a panhandle hooker storm for Colorado, so that hasn't changed. Storm number two, uh, weak to moderate, uh, atmospheric river surge into California, along with a nice shot of interior snow, and there's still a bullseye for southern Colorado and also the Sierra, so we'll look at all that in the, uh, the forecast coming up. I want to show you water vapor here. Um, just give you the lay of the land this afternoon. There's our big storm system. That's going to be the first storm. And then the second one is sitting there behind it. So I'll just mark them. There's one and there's two. And both of them will be carried in on the heels of this powerful subtropical jet straight in. The second one digs a little further to the south and then it bounces in. But both of them are part of this first of the week February pattern change. Both of them are coming in. Let me uh, just talk a little bit about uh, this. So I also went into my uh, my blog. I wrote that this afternoon. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the freezing level since I mentioned that. Forecast rain snow line, in other words. In the Sierra, initially, when that storm comes in late tomorrow night, the snow level started 10,000, but they'll drop to 7,400. And then on 2-1, they'll start at about 7,000 in the morning and then drop to 3,600. So it does turn colder. And you can see the numbers, the maxes and the mins for 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2, 4. In the Wasatch, uh, the freezing level starts on 2, 1 uh, at about 9,400 feet during the day. And you can see it does, the, the numbers do fall. It does turn colder on 2, 2. Certainly that's the case on 2, 3 and stays there um, just about there on 2, 4. So if you want to check that out, chrystomer.com. I also talk about the atmospheric river and a bunch of other things on here. Uh, in fact, here is the forecast. Integrated vapor transport. Um, in other words, we're looking at the atmospheric river um, intensity here. And you can see there's a spike late 1231 into, into uh, 2, 1. And that is in, this is in the central to northern California coastline near um, San Francisco. And this gives you an idea of what then could then translate or get evicted into the interior. Another um, another little spike there of weak to slightly moderate potentially atmospheric river moisture on late to uh, two three into two four early two five. So those are the two storm systems and the amount of uh, integrated vapor transport or atmospheric river moisture that they'll bring into California. Here is what the forecast radar and satellite look like. This is the current state of affairs. So here's the early morning of 31. Here's the afternoon. You can see the storm moving towards the Sierra. It's going to hit hard. Heavy snow with high snow levels, but of course, like I showed you, they're going to be falling. This is the morning of 2-1. There's 2-1 of the afternoon. Now here's the morning of 2-2. Storm makes its move into the interior. Heavy snow developing, but again, again, warm at the onset of this in parts of Utah and Colorado and Idaho for that matter, but the snow levels will come down. Here's 2-2 in the afternoon. Now here's a key time frame. This is the morning hours of 2-3. This is when we could potentially get that panhandle hooker storm system developing for Colorado to enhance the snow that's already there. So in other words, what does that mean? Well, we're going to get a low that develops somewhere between southeast Colorado, Albuquerque, and the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. That's a key development area because with that you get a rotation around the top of the storm and you get those east-northeasterly winds over the top of Denver and you can really produce some heavy upslope type of precipitation, which is what may happen here. So we'll have to see. But we could have snow all the way down into Denver. All right, there's 2-3 uh, in the afternoon. There's 2-4 in the morning. 2-5. Storm comes out of California. This is storm number two. There's 2-7 in the afternoon. By 2-7, we're looking at snow over the top of Colorado. Still snowing hard in the Wasatch, the Tetons. Here's 2-7 in the morning, or 2-8 in the morning. And there's 2-8 in the afternoon. So another shot of snow, potentially, for the Denver area by late 2-8. So two different storm systems stacked up for the first week of February. All right, guys, let's look at the jet stream. So this is 2-1. Nothing really has changed. Strong jet streak, subtropical jet bringing in 
the first storm system right on the nose there in California. Here's 2.8, still looking at a pretty deep trough coming out of uh, California, moving now into Utah, Arizona, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico. So that's that storm that basically runs uh, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, and then it would exit on 2.9. All right, as far as, snow, as, far as snowfall goes, um, period one looks like this. Barely anything for the Intermountain, basically nothing. It's all West Coast. Here's the grand total map. Here's 2-1 through 2-8. Big time snowfall, Sierra. Tahoe down to Mammoth. Mammoth obviously gets the most there with this setup. But looking at two feet for the Tetons, two feet for the Wasatch, two feet in Bryan Head, one to two feet in Colorado, maybe three feet in southwest Colorado. That's why I say there's a bullseye there and there's a bullseye over the Sierra. I'm looking at some decent numbers, probably one to two feet in Idaho. Anywhere you see purple is a foot or more. The numbers for Taos and northern New Mexico have gone up as well. Um, so let's do it by time period. Here's 2 1 through 2 4, storm number one. About a foot in Colorado. Two feet, maybe three feet in the Sierra. About a foot for the Wasatch. Six to 12 for the Tetons. Storm number two, 2 5 through 2 8. Um, another 8 to 16 for Colorado. And potentially more down in the uh, southwestern uh, mountains of Colorado, the San Juans, all the way to Wolf Creek, Telluride, Purgatory, Silverton. Another foot for the uh, the Wasatch, a little over a foot for the Tetons, and another one to three feet for the Sierra. So that's how it all adds up. All right, let's go to the northeast. There's really not much here, about an inch or two, two one into two two. So very light snow. I just don't have any. I don't see any uh, really strong storm systems at all. All right, so we're going to end on the grand total map. Again, this is 2-1 uh, through 2-8, two, two storm systems gradually turning colder. Each one of these storm systems brings quite a bit of moisture. In fact, at least a week, if not to a moderate contribution from the atmospheric river. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it and take care.